Hey guys, Marmalade here with Marmalade Outdoors and uh, thank you for joining me. I'm excited about this new series. So if you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do so uh, and hit that uh, like button too. That helps out the algorithms in the channel. And of course hit that, uh, forget which side, but hit that notification bell. So you'll be notified uh, when I post more videos for this series and others. But uh, this is a brand new series, as I said, called Backpacking, Hiking, and tips for older hikers. Well, let me tell you something about me. I am currently almost 60. I'll be 60 in what, two months? Oh man, two months. But uh, I started backpacking. I'm on my seventh year, so when I was 53, and just fell in love with it. I also, of course, do a lot of hiking, but um, I thought I could share my extensive experience. Uh, I'm in the process. I attempted to hike the PCT in uh, 2019. I'm still trying to finish that up uh, this year when I get I'm going to do another section I'll have about 2200 miles of the 2653 done so I'll be almost done but I have quite a bit of experience I hike with a lot of people around my age or older so I feel like I have a lot to share so um, this is uh, part one of seven tips for older hikers and uh, I'm excited about it let me know if there's other things as an older hiker that you'd like to see or even questions you have. I can always do a Q&A if I get enough questions, or I can uh, do it one of these videos. So I'm gonna do part one and part two. Each will have seven uh, tips. And after that, I'll have some other videos just about certain topics, things that might help you and just specific topics. So definitely leave me comments and uh, any problems or issues you're having or worries or concerns, or even just thoughts or ideas for videos for older hikers. So, so let's get on with number one. Number one is prepare yourself mentally and emotionally. So it seems my, maybe a little strange if you're doing a longer hike or backpacking trip or a whole through hike, but uh, it's very true. Uh, I, like I said, I'm almost 60. I have one son who at, at this time in 2022 is 25 years old. I did it uh, in 19. I started, I'm like I said, still finishing, but my son was I think 22 at the time. And uh, when you're older, you have kids and grandkids and maybe you're married, I'm single, but maybe you're married and um, you know you have a lot of other draws or pullbacks to you that uh, distract you from focusing because the trail is very tough. Or somebody who's 20 in their 20s, generally doesn't have kids yet, a lot of them, and uh, or married or like responsibilities, maybe a lot of kids that do uh, through hikes, like graduate from college, and then get right on trail and kind of do that before they have all the responsibilities of life. So for me personally, uh, as I said, I had a 22 year old son at the time and uh, we're very close, but you know, uh, man, did I miss him. I miss him uh, not only to spend time with him and see him, that kind of thing, but also, you know, it's not his passion, it's mine, but gosh, I wish I, he could have seen and experienced all the things I was seeing, experiencing and all the amazing people I met. So. You know, I just wish he could have done that too, but uh, um, the one good thing I had is, you know, uh, between my Garmin inReach, I could text from the trail, even in remote areas when there was no service, and I could, of course, text uh, when I was in a town. So that was, and, you know, we'd talk on the phone once in a while, but uh, I'll give you an example. Like for the young kids, that I hiked, when I started my uh, PCT journey in 2019, I hiked with uh, two amazing young guys, uh, Adam and Grant, they're best buddies from Oregon. And uh, they were my son's age, or like the younger, actually 20 and 21, but uh, um, hold on, we got a turn off here, here we go. So, uh, you know, they, they were young and uh, one was taking a, trying to hike in the summer and maybe take a semester off for school. The other one uh, just um, quit his job to go and did, didn't have any uh, connections, no kids, not no girlfriends, married or anything, anything like that. So it was much easier to get on trail. All right, number two is, as an older hiker or backpacker, don't be intimidated or afraid of technology. It's easy for us not to be uh, too cool with it and just kind of be intimidated by it, and I know I am in many times. Uh, but uh, there's a couple things. I have a Garmin inReach, as I said. I could uh, text remotely and communicate with loved ones, make sure they know I'm okay, uh, things like that. The biggest technology we use on trail is it was called gut hook it's a gps uh, trail app now it's called far out and um, you can purchase trails so you can purchase the pct but on trail i uh i think i only met two people that i met that were not using a gps app it just makes sense and had, we're using maps and compass and things like that the benefit to far out uh 
I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but it just makes sense when every single person but the two I met had it, is um, it tells you, it has a red line, which is the trail. It's kind of like Google. Like when you set a destination, it shows the whole trail. And if you make a wrong turn and you're off trail, which happens a lot, it'll tell you where to get on, on back on trail. Most importantly, it shows uh, water, water sources. And um, you can leave live comments of like when you say you go there today and you get water, you can leave it. And everybody behind you can see that comment and know if there's water at that particular water source coming up. Helps you plan how much water to carry between water sources. And there's campgrounds. There's blue trail, blue blazers trails to get off trail to get into town to resupply or maybe your knees hurting or you got bad blisters and you need to get off trail for a while. So it shows you how to get off trail and where to go. It shows you mileage, elevation. You can look at elevation profile if you want to see, okay, well, how much climb do I have today? So definitely look into that. It's great to have. It's not like uh, Google where you has covers the whole world. You buy the trail you want. And so as they keep adding trails, but if you're doing the Appalachian Trail, the PCT, you can buy the trail for the John Muir Trail. And uh, once you use it, uh, it's hard to go back to anything else besides uh, besides that. Oh yeah, one last part of that that I forgot, on the Garmin inReach, it has an SOS button. So if you get badly hurt, you get lost, you run out of food, people get uh, dehydrated or overheated, things like that, uh, you can push the SOS button and uh, somebody will come and get you. So uh it could save your life so it's very important all right number three is very contentious but is base weight especially as we get older and i i uh feel you should do this even when you're 20 something but as you get older your base weight really matters and what is base weight base weight is every single thing you're going to bring on a backpacking trip in your pack except for your for your food and your water, and even if you get technical, your fuel canister, because that always changes. It's everything that you're gonna carry every single day um, while you're, uh, cause that's only measurable. Some days you carry a lot of water or parts of the day. Sometimes you have lots of food or not, so you can't, it's not measurable. You can't say your pack's 35 pounds cause it's changing all the time. So if you measure your base weight, that's what you wanna get lighter. So when I first started in 2016, I was a brand new newbie. I uh, didn't know a single thing about backpacking, but I just fell in love with it. So I learned from other people that are more experienced than me. I watched a lot of uh, gear list videos, which I have on my channel, but a lot of people have if you wanted to see what people are using. And I would watch a lot of people and videos and everyone's gonna say, oh yeah, that, that cook kit, that looks good, I'm gonna do that. And the things that made sense to me, because there is no wrong or right to this. There's a saying that we uh, backpackers use is you pack for your fears. And that was definitely evident with me. Uh, I always early on brought way too much clothes and too much food. So one of the things I suggest to use when you're doing like a weekend trips, uh, run it lean, but bring what you need. Whoa, squirrel almost uh, ran under my feet. Uh, bring what you need, but at the end of your trip, be honest, lay it all out on a table or a bed and look at what you brought and what you needed. Like uh, if you didn't touch it, you may not need it. now. It's not always true, like a rain jacket you need even if it doesn't rain. I use rain jackets more for warmth than I even do for rain, but um, so you need that no matter what. But you know, like I one time I brought four sweaters for a two day backpacking trip. It's like, what the heck, you know? And then I'd get done with my trip and I'd have half my food still left. So I kept thinking, you know, what am I thinking? Like, am I thinking I'm gonna die out there if I don't bring enough food? So I've got that pretty dialed in now, so that's good. Man, my hands, this thing's getting heavy. Keep switching hands, so sorry about that. But yeah, so, you know, do your research on gear. I went, I started with a car camping tent that was six pounds, and now I have a, a Z-Pax Triplex tent. That's a three-person tent, because I'm tall, that weighs 20, I think it weighs 24 ounces. Yeah, so a pound and a half. So that's where I progress. Now, generally with gear, the lighter you go and the smaller and more cat compact you go, the more expensive it is. So for me, it's always been two things as I've dialed in my gear. is the base weight like we talked about, but the physical size, because once I got my gear dialed in and got smaller, lighter things, I went to a much smaller pack, which saved me like a pound and a half to two pounds just on the weight of the pack itself. So just keep that in mind. Number four for older hikers is trekking poles. And I got a bit, when I was a beginner and new at it, I laughed at them. I'm like, what? Those are for old people, you know? And that was when I was 53. I guess I didn't know I was old at that time, but I laughed at them. But 
when I started getting more into it and going up big steep mountains and down big steep mountains, I realized that they could really help me out. I borrowed some and used them and then since I've never gone back since then. Uh, they've done, I've seen a study somewhere where when going uphill, if you use your, your poles properly, it'll help like five to 7%. So it's, uh, you know, when you're going upstairs, let's say it's like grabbing onto the railing and helping yourself. So that's, that's kind of what it's like. I'm blessed to have good ankles and legs and knees, but I know people hike with that bad knees, the downhill is torture to them. So using your uh, poles to, to bear some of the weight is really important, really helps you out. In my case, there's another use for my poles, which is my, my, uh, my non freestanding uh, tent. I need my two poles for that. So for me, they really help. Hey, I'm even using it right now to vlog. So many uses for it. Uh, I also feel like this kind of sounds silly, but you know, I, I, I live in San Diego and, and hike in the desert a lot on the PCT, even on my free time. And there's a lot of snakes out here, rattlesnakes right now in the summer. And I've always felt like maybe if a snake were to come after me or try to strike me, I, my poles could help if I have my hands and I'm hiking to help, you know, like whack them and protect me. So uh, they're, they're great to have. And the last thing that I just thought of was I use them a lot, like especially the Sierras. Uh, and in Washington on the PCT was a uh, river crossings because there's a lot of really difficult crossings where you're balancing on wet rocks and rocks that move and weird angled rocks. Also, I've used them. I'm not very fond of heights. So I've had a couple times where I've had been on a log over a very wide river, but the logs very high over the river, like scary high. So they just help with your balance when you're on rocks over a river, you can plant them in the river and uh, keep your balance. And then on logs, I just use them almost like balancing. And uh, so, yeah, trekking poles. All right, number five is maybe the most important one of this first seven in part one. And uh, this is for any age, but especially older hikers, is what part of your body when you hike, especially if you're gonna do long distance, hurts the most? Well, I think we're all different, but uh, a lot of people agree their feet. So I think it's very important for you if before you do any longer trips, or even when you do weekend trips, but if you're gonna do a through hike or a longer trip, to really dial in your shoes, socks uh, system. Uh, there's a lot of stats that I've uh, spewed out in the past videos I've made about uh, all kinds of stats of the PCT, like how many completed, what are the age ranges on trail, uh, how far the average person goes before they quit, things like that. But uh, it's known that a huge percentage of people quit on the PCT in the first 100, 110 miles because um, of many things, but their feet. Even seasoned people uh, don't get their shoes dialed in perfect. So you get a ton of blisters, you know, your feet are aching, all that kind of things. I mean, it's hard enough to do these trails when you're healthy, let alone when, you're, uh, when your feet are hurting you. So make sure you dial that in. You might need insoles. Like in my case, I uh, early on used uh, liner socks. They were like actually toe liner socks where the material went between every single toe, almost like a glove for your feet. And uh, that would reduce the rubbing and, and not give you uh, blisters. And then I bring my uh, wool sock over that. So that's how I never had a blister when I, when I did it that way. I've since trained my feet not to need the liners and I just use a, a darn tough wool sock. So that's what I do, but I've had to condition my feet over time. So make sure before any significant trips you get that, don't buy new shoes and then go the next day on your trip. Just don't do it. And uh, your feet will thank you for it later. All right, number six is mostly for men, but uh, is as we get older, for especially for men, we tend to pee more and more and more often. When you're backpacking during the day, it's no big deal. You can go pee in the trees or whatever, but what do you do at night? I happen to be a very light sleeper and roll around about every half hour to hour, I roll to the other side, I'm a side sleeper. And then two to four or five times a night, I have to go pee. It's because I'm a light sleeper, I do not want to get out of the tent, especially if it was raining or something, but even if it's just cold out, which it usually is, I don't want to get out of the tent, go find somewhere to pee, get back in the tent, try to get warm because I'm a light sleeper and it just wakes me up. The cold wakes me up. It would take me forever to uh, fall back to sleep. And if I have to do that two to five times, it's just not, uh, feasible. So how do I solve that? Uh, I use this. It's a Nalgene uh, bottle and it's uh, just a roll up light. It weighs like one ounce 
takes up no space, but uh, I think it's about a liter, liter and a half of space. That way uh, I can stay warm my quill, uh, go to the bathroom real quick, make sure the lid's screwed back on, <laughs> and go back to sleep. So that's how I solve that. Uh, I know it's tougher for women, so for you women that are watching, uh, how do you solve the problem? That'd be good to know for one of my videos. But uh, I know most of the women I know just get up a couple times a night and go pee, but for me it's problematic. I can do it, but then I'm uh, freezing cold, it wakes me up, and because I'm a light sleeper, it takes me forever to, forever to fall asleep. So, uh, yeah, I mean, some people carry like Gatorade bottles, it depends what you want, but um, I have the Nalgene bottle that's uh, just a roll up soft bottle and uh, it's really worked well for me all right number seven and the final one for this video for part one is know your why and what does that mean it means a few things if you're going to attempt a really long trail or a through hike uh just go no i'm going to do it and you get out there and there's a saying we use embrace and suck a lot of parts of the days a lot of whole days really suck are very difficult you're not feeling it, the weather's bad, you slept poorly, all that stuff. Uh, it's all uphill all day or downhill, depending on what your nemesis is. And people quit because they don't have a why. They're just out there. They don't know why. What is it about is that you're out there for? And for me, my why has been, I fell in love with this only under seven years ago. And I realized how good it was for me physically, mentally, emotionally. How much I got from it despite how difficult it is and I call it disconnecting from society we all have a lot of uh, uh, responsibilities and pressure and stressors things like that once you've been in the backcountry and hiked at least as much as I have you know you get when you're in society you get immune to all the noise and the stress and everything going fast People honking and just loud music and all that stuff and uh, rude people <laughs> and getting into nature is a way to disconnect there are people who come out of the military and will do a through hike and can cure themselves from PTSD just purely by shutting off all that and getting back to what's and getting back to nature um, so I've realized that's what it does for me so Know your why. I mean, there's another term called hike your own hike. Uh, if you're with other people on a longer trail, let's say you didn't start with them, they're not friends, but you met them. And you're trying to do a fast hike. You're trying to go slow or try to stop and take pictures. And you're with people that aren't doing the same pace or you want into that thing. Hike your own hike. Separate from them and tra stay true to yourself. It's very, very important. But know your why. You know, you don't have to know your why on a weekend trip. Your, your why is, I'm just getting out to get some exercise. But when you're doing longer trails, knowing your why really helps get through the tough times so you don't forget why you're out there. All right, guys, that's the first seven. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, hope they were helpful. And uh, if you have any thoughts, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Um, if you have some ideas for other videos, leave them down below too. And if I think that they're useful for older hikers, I'll make a video. Uh, if you look in the description box below, if you enjoyed this content, there's a way to support my channel. It would be very helpful. I'm getting back on trail. I'll be making a video pretty soon about when I'm getting on trail on PCT to do another chunk and where and what time and how far and all that. So if you'd like to help support me while I'm out on trail, that would be greatly appreciated. And uh, remember, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. And look out for number two, part two, very soon. Thanks, Marmalade's out, bye.